It's the magic of math here. Welcome to my lesson on adding rational numbers that are fractions. We're going to review all the steps for you to be successful adding, keeping in mind that we're going to move the negative sign of any fraction to the numerator. Here's our lesson today. You, the student, will add rational numbers that are in fraction form. Here's the question I would like you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson. How are adding rational numbers in fraction form and adding integers similar? So we're going to apply everything we know about integers and incorporate it into adding rational numbers that are fraction. And you're going to connect anything that's similar. Here are our steps for how to add rational numbers that are in fraction form. So step one, if necessary, we're going to write mixed numbers as improper fractions. Step two, if necessary, we're going to rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. Step three, we're going to add the numerators using integer rules and keep the denominator, reminding you that we have two integer rules, same signs and different signs. So if the numerators have the same signs, we're going to use the same signs rule. And if the numerators have different signs, we're going to use the different signs rule just like we did with integers. And then step four, our final step, if necessary, we'll simplify the fraction. All right, let's put these steps to work. We're gonna practice. Here we go, we have, we're gonna add negative three tenths and two fifths. So step one, if necessary, we're gonna write mixed numbers as improper fractions. Well, these are already, these are not mixed numbers, so step one is not necessary. Step two, if necessary, rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. So here, we do not have a common denominator. We have negative three tenths and two fifths. So we want 10, we want to have two fifths have a denominator of 10. Five is a factor of 10. So I know that five multiplied by two is 10. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So two times two is four, Five times two is 10. So two fifths and four tenths are equivalent. So let's rewrite our problem now that we have a common denominator, keeping our negative sign, incorporating it into the numerator. So we want our denominators to be the same. So they're both gonna be positive 10. So negative three tenths. Your negative sign in a fraction can be in the numerator, the denominator, or next to it. But for the purpose of adding, and when we move on to subtracting in the next video, we want to put the negative sign with the numerator. Keep the denominator positive. All right, let's move on here, bringing our four tenths down. So now, because these are equivalent, these expressions, right, these numerical expressions are equivalent. We just changed so that we have a common denominator. Negative three tenths add four tenths. We're ready for step three which says we're gonna add the numerators using our integer rules, same signs and different signs. So let's do that. We're gonna add the numerators. So our numerators are negative three and four. They are different signs. We have a negative and a positive. So we're gonna find the absolute value of the numerators and subtract the smaller from the larger using the sign of the numerator that had the larger absolute value. So our absolute values are three and four. Our larger absolute value right here is four. So I know that my sum when I add is gonna be positive. So my larger subtract my smaller. Four subtract three is one and it's positive one. So one. Now we're gonna keep our denominator. That's why we went and got a common denominator. So our denominator is 10. So that's step three. Step four says, if necessary, we're gonna simplify the fraction. Well, 1 tenth is in simplest form, so step four is not necessary. So negative 3 tenths add 2 fifths, we get a common denominator, negative 3 tenths add 4 tenths, and that has a sum of 1 tenth, which is in simplest form. All right, now it's your turn. We've reviewed the rules. You're gonna find the sum of negative 1 half add 5 sixths. So I'd like you to pause the video, do your best work showing all four steps if necessary, and then come back and hit play to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. 
Here's our solution. So step one, if necessary, write mixed numbers as improper fractions. That's not necessary. Step two, if necessary, rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. So we can see that that's necessary. We have a denominator of two and a denominator of six. So our common denominator here is going to be six, seeing as two is a factor of six. We want to change this denominator to be six. So we're going to multiply by three. And what I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So two times three will be six. And then remember, we're going to take our negative sign with our numerator. Negative one times three is negative three over a common denominator of six. Two times three is six. So now negative three six and five six have a common denominator. So let's bring that down. Negative three six, we're going to add our five six. All right, we're ready for step three. Step three is where we're going to add the numerators using our integer rules and keep the denominator. So we want to go look at our numerators because we're going to add those together and we get to determine which signs we have. Same signs are different. Well, we have a negative and a positive. So here, different signs. So again, we're going to find the absolute value of the numerators, subtract the smaller from the larger using the sign of the numerator with the larger absolute value. So absolute value of negative three is three, absolute value of five is five. So this is the larger. So again, it's going to be positive after I subtract. Five subtract three is two, and my larger was positive, so two. Now we're going to keep the denominator, which is six. So two over six. We're ready for step four. Step four says, if necessary, simplify the fraction. So this fraction is not in simplest form. Each, num the numerator and the denominator are each divisible by two. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. So our sum in simplest form is one third. All right, here's another one for you. Go ahead, remember all four steps. Go ahead and try, show your work, come back to see mine. Good luck. Welcome back, here's our solution. So step one, if necessary, write mixed numbers as improper fractions. We can see we have a mixed number here, so the first thing we're gonna do is rewrite this as an improper fraction. Three times negative two, three times two times plus two. So three times two is six, plus two is eight, and it's gonna be negative. So negative eight over three. So three times two, six plus two is eight. Remember, we're gonna put the negative sign in the numerator. We're gonna add our seven ninths and our negative eight thirds. Ready for step two. If necessary, we're gonna rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. We have a denominator of nine and a denominator of three. So we want nine to be our common denominator. Three is a factor of nine. Three times three is nine. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. Negative eight times three is negative 24 over our common denominator of nine. So let's bring that down. We have seven ninths and we're gonna add negative 24 ninths. We're ready for step three. Step three, we're gonna add the numerators using integer rules and keep the denominator. So we're gonna determine same signs or different signs. Here we have our numerators, seven and negative 24, different signs. So we're gonna find the absolute values, subtract the smaller from the larger and keep the sign of the larger. Absolute value of seven is seven, absolute value of negative 24 is 24. So that's the larger absolute value. So I know my numerator after I add is gonna be negative. 24 subtract seven is 17 and it's negative. And we're gonna keep our denominator, which is nine. All right, step four, if necessary, simplify the fraction. So negative 17 ninths is in simplest form. However, we could write it as a mixed number. Nine goes into 17, once with eight left over and a denominator of nine. Nine times one is nine plus eight is 17. So negative 17 ninths or negative one and eight ninths. All right, here's one more for you. I'd like you to pause the video here. Remember all four steps. Come back and check your work when you're done. 
Welcome back. So step one, if necessary, write mixed numbers as improper fractions. Both of these values are mixed numbers. Three times two is six plus two is eight. So I have negative eight thirds. Remember, we're gonna put the negative sign in the numerator. We're gonna add two times five is 10 plus one is 11, taking that negative sign in the numerator. So negative 11 over two. Now we're ready for step two, which is if necessary, rewrite fractions to have a common denominator. So we can see that we have unlike denominators. So they're both prime. So what I'm gonna do is multiply the denominator three by two. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So here I'm gonna have two times negative eight, which is negative 16, all over our common denominator of six. Here, I'm gonna multiply by three. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. Negative 11 times three is negative 33 over our common denominator of six. Now we're ready for step three. We're gonna add the numerators using our integer rules and keep the denominator. So adding our numerators, our numerators are negative 16 and negative 33. This is same signs. So same sign says to find the absolute value of the numerators, we're gonna add them and then use the common sign. So they're both negative. So 16 plus 33 is 49, keeping the sign because they're both negative. And then we're gonna keep our denominator. We already found our common denominator. We're gonna keep that common denominator of six. And then step four is if necessary, simplify the fraction. So negative 49 six is in simplest form, but it could be written as a mixed number. Six goes into 49 eight times with one left over. So there you have it, negative 49 six or negative eight and one six, depending on how your teacher wants you to answer. All right, that is our four easy steps to adding rational numbers that are fractions. And don't forget, we're gonna move any negative signs to the numerator. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day, and I hope you come back soon.